when he saw this, he was just like, that's gonna be his best friend. And I could have cried. <laughs> I have been absorbed by my stuffed animal project. If you caught up with me in my knitting podcast episode, I shared that I was about to cast on or had just cast on a giraffe from the Wild Knitted Animal Friends or Knitted Wild Animal Friends book, pattern book. And while that's something that I would just never have imagined myself to want to cast on and work up and finish and complete, I did, I wanted to. <laughs> I couldn't resist because the stuffed animal, of course, because I'm on this baby knitting marathon, that's a perfect addition. And it's a completely new project that I think really like reinvigorated my knitting mojo, which is just really great. Not quite. I finished all of the pieces and now I need to just stuff them. So I have a bunch of little appendages <laughs> that I need to stuff with some stuffing and yeah, just assemble this thing, which I think that's kind of the worst part of this project. <laughs> Something that I'm not really looking forward to if I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Uh, the knitting part was just, so much fun. It's always seaming and putting something together that makes it, that I get stuck on. Uh, that's kind of why I do, you know, knitting in the round. I think that's why a lot of us knit in the round <laughs> for sweaters and things, uh, because seamless sweaters are so much easier to finish. <laughs> but, uh, okay. So no big deal. I gotta stitch these up. That's not, not an issue at all, but the thing that really energized me about this was just how unique and how interesting the construction was. Uh, this is the hand, for example, and it has a little thumb. I mean, I, I don't know if you can really tell, but I know it because I worked it up <laughs> with my increases and decreases. Once I put stuffing in here, you're going to kind of see a tiny little thumb forming. Yeah, you can kind of see that. Um, and then we have ears. Like this ear is way too cute. Uh, Osseons. This is also with some string, but like the little thingies on the giraffe. This was really cool. That was like a cool thing to stitch up. The hand, of course. We got the foot. Like, look at this little foot. It's way too cute. Yeah, so I have little pieces like that, but uh, I already did get started with the stuffing that I have. Um, but then I stopped myself and I was like, Bethany, you want to share this process with people. You told yourself that you wanted to do that. So you need to just, I stopped myself in my tracks and I turned on the camera and <laughs> here we are. Uh, so I have the body done right here. And uh, I think it looks pretty good. Please tell me it looks good. <laughs> like, look at that. From the front, it looks really good. I will say I'm not so happy with how it turned out on the back because you can see here, there's just holes. Not my best work. Um, throughout the entire project, um, 
uh, it's told you're told to work in intarsia, which is was doable for all of the other pieces because you were only switching colors every so often. But for this one, I found it really difficult to do intarsia because there were multiple spots on the row, like three per row. And before I was kind of dividing one skein and that was pretty manageable. It was still getting tangled, but it wasn't so bad. But here I really couldn't handle it. It made the project very difficult. So what I decided to do was to do color work with floats. And um, I thought it was going pretty well. It definitely made the project more mobile. I was able to <laughs> move around with it and not worry so much about tangles. It still got tangled a little bit, but not too bad. So I was able to work it up fine and I thought I was doing a good job, but I think I might've overcompensated because I was trying really hard not to work the strands too tightly. But in retrospect, I probably should have just not worried about it and it would have been a lot better because I feel like the places where I made sure my tension was very light or loose, uh, looser, that's where I'm getting these holes. So now that it's stuffed, the stuffing is kind of popping out, but it's only on the back. So that's good. <laughs> Uh, it works for now. I think if it really bothers me, at least there's a lot of different clothing pattern options in the book that I could potentially knit up and cover that issue up. But for now, the front's fine. The back is fine too. It's just how much is it going to bother me? You know, I did pick up some stuffing right here. This is 500 grams of just stuffed animal stuffing. Got from my local craft store. <sighs> I don't think I need 500 grams, but I wanted to be safe. Looks like a little cloud. Let's do it. got to see this. I put the giraffe together. The giraffe is complete. This project is done. I'm so excited about it. Um, first, look at how much I have left over. So I needed one skein each of these two colors, and then I needed two skeins of this nice cream color, which was the main colorway. And I don't know what I'm going to do with this. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, I'll think of something, I'm sure. Uh, that's the one downside I think about this project is that you needed such only such a small, small amount of these two colors, you know, just for like some accents um, from some secondary colors that you just, it's kind of a shame that there's no smaller bo um, ball that you can use, but whatever. So a little bit of waste for this from this project, but the result makes everything so, so worth it. Okay, you ready? So cute. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so this is Isabel the giraffe. Um, something that I didn't know I needed in my life until she is now here. <laughs> this stuffed animal turned out so well, you guys. I am so over the moon with how she looks. She is very, very long like a giraffe should be. Um, but in general, I just, I couldn't be happier with how this first stuffed animal turned out because I definitely think this project was a learning curve. And if I do 
knit up another stuffed animal in the future. I think I've learned so much from this project that will make the finished object even better. But that being said, just, I think she's so sweet, <laughs> right? So a couple of things I wanted to talk through about this project, kind of just to wrap things up, my, my final thoughts and, um, yeah, just everything about this process. In general, I think that this was a very easy project. Uh, the pattern book itself is just a wealth of knowledge and I cannot recommend it enough. I, I think I've definitely sung its praises in the knitting podcast and now I'm just gonna say, since I've worked up a project, that I would really recommend it. I would, if you're interested in knitting a stuffed animal, I think that it's a great thing to invest in because you get a lot of different patterns and she tells you about all the techniques that you need to know, which is great. I do think that mine came out as the picture a little bit. <laughs> Definitely has its own unique twist to it. Uh, there are just certain things like attaching the little pieces together that I think with practice will just be so much nicer and a little bit more polished. But even still, I think she is pretty sturdy. She will be able to take a beating, I think, which I think is gonna be something that's important. Uh, one thing though that I noticed, in general, she looks like the picture, except for her body. I guess the way I stuffed it, she's just not as plump as in the picture. She's a little bit longer, but again, I'm not upset about that just because she's a giraffe. She needs to be long. <laughs> she needs to be long and tall, and man, she is long and tall. Uh, Another thing for the project list, the um, project calls for buttons for the eyes, but um, it also had a note saying that if uh, it's for any child younger than three, recommending not to use buttons. So what I ended up doing is doing the embroidery, um, using embroidery floss for the eyes, <laughs> which is a pretty interesting, I did a pretty interesting job here. <laughs> <laughs> but I added a little eyelash because uh, I had the two circles originally and I was just like, something looks off. And since she's a lady, I thought she deserved some cute little eyelashes. I love the Osseons. I think I'm saying that right. Her little ears are lopsided, but I think that just adds to like the magic of a knitted stuffed animal, you know? Uh, and that's kind of my general takeaway from this. It's that she is 100% unique, which is just so sweet in my opinion. Um, and just those little things that I've pointed out along the way, you know, like my tension issues here in the back. And then, you know, actually I think the legs look pretty great. Maybe my attaching job <laughs> could have been a little bit better, but in general, I think she turned out beautifully and I think she's gonna be just a perfect little stuffed animal for my son. It was really sweet. Throughout the entire process, when I was knitting up these little individual pieces, Roz kept looking at me and at the very end, when he saw this, he was just like, that's gonna be his best friend. And I could have cried. <laughs> I could have cried. I held it in, but that, that thought is just really, really sweet to me. And that is really what excited me throughout this entire project. Um, I've said it many, many times. I never thought that I would knit a stuffed animal, but I'm so glad that I did. Um, just a fun, unique project that I'm very, very happy with. <laughs> I would love to hear what you guys think. Does she look like the picture? Tell me that she does. Otherwise, <laughs> I'll be very upset. Uh, but yeah, so she is ready to go. And you know, I actually think she's gonna hold up pretty well. I'm a little nervous about the head, but I really tried to stitch it on enough so that, yeah, it would it would work out. But yeah, in general, I think that this is a really great project. The only downside I would say is that you get a lot of leftover yarn for what is required. So that's a little bit of a downside if you're someone like me who doesn't like to have a lot of leftovers in their stash. Um, but maybe I can use it for another stuffed animal. Who knows? Am I gonna knit another one? Absolutely. <laughs> You'll hear more about that in the future, I'm sure. But um, yeah, so that's, that's Isabel the giraffe all done.
So why did I have string all over me? Well, I'm going to share a little bit about my next big baby project. We just closed out one big baby project. And of course that means I wanna move on to the next one. This week, I haven't actually done a lot of knitting. Knitting time <laughs> has been, well, taken over by the assembly process of Isabel. But then also I am diving back into sewing, but not for my me made maternity wardrobe. I think I'm about done with that one. But instead, I'm actually going to do this quilt, you guys. So I know I mentioned to you guys that I wanted to do a quilt, but I wasn't 100% sure if I was gonna actually get around to it. And I was thinking about maybe doing a knitted alternative. In the end though, I decided, you know what? I wanna do this quilt. This is something that I have always said that I wanted to do. And it's been a dream of mine since getting pregnant to have a baby quilt that I made for my son. So we're doing it, you guys. <laughs> and here's where I've gotten. I'm really, really excited. Uh, I don't know anything about quilting, but I just jumped into it and I have some things to show for it, which is really, really exciting. So um, I'm doing these block squares in two different kind of tones. First of all, maybe I should show you exactly what pattern I'm gonna be working up <laughs> because that will kind of help show you and help envision what this is going to look like. So it's the Campfire Glow Quilt by Then Came June. Um, it's Megan Buchanan who is behind Then Then Came June. It's an Instagram account. I don't actually know where I found this though. I think I found it on Insta uh, no, on Pinterest when I was originally looking for quilt inspiration. I shared with you guys that I've been all over Pinterest <laughs> just looking at quilts and uh, this one came up and it, it added, it has a lot of elements that I was really, really interested in having for my quilt. And yeah, so I decided that it would be the best one to do. So here it is. So you can see it has some block quilts and then the little star, uh, what a, I don't know the actual terminology. <laughs> uh, the star, is it saw stars? Actually, it's calling it flying geese, but I'm pretty sure it's a star. Anyway, I know that there are a lot of quilters here, so <laughs> I'm probably going to be um, informed about the star blocks. But anyway, they're calling it star blocks and then grid blocks. Um, so in this pattern, there are two different types of square blocks or grid blocks uh, with like different color themes. And what I'm going to do is do a pairing of light, light blue and green. And then for the second block, I have tan and blue. And I have different colors because I wasn't able to get all of the same. You can't see it in this one because here all of the greens are the same and here all the blues are the same. Hold on, <laughs> let me show you. So I have some variation, which is important to me with quilts. The thing that I love about quilts is that patchwork kind of look that they have. So here you can see I have two shades of blue and one shade of tan. And that like kind of mixes throughout all of the different blocks that I have. Um, this one's a bad example because the squares don't line up, but you know, who cares? <laughs> and here is another example with the green. The green, the difference in the green is very, very subtle. But one is just a little bit richer and one is a little bit more faded. And I like having that um, contrast or that variation in the little blocks so that all over it's gonna just, none of them are really gonna match, which is really exciting. So I've been working on these grid blocks <laughs> uh, for the past couple of days. I've been cutting out and sewing up and, and doing trial and error <laughs> because again, I'm new to quilting, 100% beginner in quilting, and I still consider myself pretty new to sewing. Um, but I actually feel like I've kind of upgraded a little bit and I'm feeling a lot more comfortable with sewing patterns, but a quilting pattern is something in of itself. <laughs> it's crazy. Anyway, uh, I only, I don't want to go too, too far into it, but I did just want to show you guys where I'm at with it and my color scheme. So I have 
these colors right here. And then if you notice in the uh, example quilt, there are little star blocks that have a pop of color. And here's what I was thinking for the pop of color. This really awesome terracotta red. I think it'll just be a really fun pop of color. And then I have this peach to go behind it that keeps it a little bit soft. Um, I also have some other options too, but these are the main colors that I'm really excited about for this quilt. And that's what's gotten me really energized right now. This has really just sucked me in <laughs> and I've been just wanting to work on it nonstop. So that's what I'm gonna be doing now. I'm actually going to leave you guys to continue on my blocks because I need to make 24 of each. And then I need to figure out how to make that star block or that flying geese block, <laughs> which is just really fun and exciting. So now I have a bunch of string all over me again. I do have other knitting projects that are on the needles, but they're not really in a place where I wanna share that at the moment. Um, I think I'll have a little bit more progress for a knitting podcast very soon, which is very exciting. But thank you guys so much for joining me on this little project update. I have really just the past week, uh, week and a half, two weeks, just been focused on this stuffed animal project. It was so, so fun. Of course, I've talked about it plenty, but I appreciate you guys also cheering me on for this project and sharing that a lot of you are also knitting up some of these stuffed animals. It was cool to know that we were all kind of knitting one up with each other. <laughs> so if you were knitting up something from the Knitted Wild Animal Friends book, definitely let me know how your progress is going. And if you're not, if you're not knitting a stuffed animal, no worries, just tell me what you have been working on this week and what you're about to finish up and what you're excited about. I would love to hear that. So thank you guys so much for watching and definitely give this video a like if you enjoyed it and maybe subscribe if you wanna stick around. I would love to have you here and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.